What's up y'all, Shuffle, and today's video is a bit unorthodox compared to the usual content. This is five ways to tell if you are playing well in Darkest Dungeon. So if you want to make sure that you're doing all the stuff and winning the game, this is kind of how you tell that it's happening. So before we get started, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, check out all the stuff below in the box like Discord, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon. And then also for you new people who ask like, oh, is there a video on this and that? Because I get a lot of those comments and a lot of the times there aren't videos on this or that, but if you are curious, make sure to check out the playlist tab on the channel because I usually put all of my videos into some kind of playlist. The first metric I point to to see if I'm playing well or if the team I made is performing the way it should be is if fights are ending in about four turns. This doesn't mean that the last enemy dies on turn four because sometimes you do want to stall a little bit and heal and I have talked about this before in other videos, but the easiest thing to point to to see if your team is a well-oiled machine is to see if fights are pretty much wrapped up on turn 4. This means that the big threats on the enemy team are gone, and you're working on the last maybe one or two units, and they're heavily subdued either by being out of position, or stunned, or their damage is lower, just anything that makes it so they can do minimal harm to you. You can come up with any creative random team in this game. Like, I get so many comments where people just say, hey, I made this team, is it any good? And my response is usually, are you doing okay in fights? You know, if you're killing enemies and you're not taking a bunch of damage and you're not hitting Death's Door and you're not afflicting, the team is fine. So it doesn't have to be some mega optimal thing that I post or that you see in some other streamer's game. There's so many combinations of characters that work. So if you're ending fights around turn four consistently, even if it's mini bosses or if it's bigger size two enemies and stuff like that, only some bosses usually go past four turns. But as long as you have some kind of comfortable lead on turn four, then you're doing fine. The second thing is probably something the most people point to and say, hey, I'm doing well or I'm not playing well, and that is your stress level. So if you're leaving a dungeon where people are pretty much not entirely stress-free, because it's really hard to get everyone down to zero unless you camp at the end, but if you're getting out of the dungeon with like 5, 10, 15, even 20 stress, you're doing fine. It doesn't matter if everyone is at 20 stress, like you still did fine in most cases. You don't have to have a stress healer to make this happen either. There are a lot of ways to mitigate stress, like you can have a stun comp that can stop stress dealers from dealing stress to you. You can have really good knowledge of the environment. So like the ruins has a couple or one big thing to heal stress, for instance, that's the confession booth and you can disarm traps. There are a lot of ways to get rid of stress besides camping, besides skills. So if you're able to leave the dungeon with minimal stress and you don't have to spend money on facilities, then you're doing fine. It doesn't matter if you get stress out a bunch in the middle of the dungeon because, you know, stuff happens. That's just the nature of the game. There's variants, there's crits, there's surprises, there's all kinds of stuff that can happen that causes you stress. You can just run over a trap. You didn't scout, for instance. There's just so many things that add to stress in this game, but it's how you recover from that. Did you stall enough to heal the stress off? Did you camp at the right time? Did you hit a couple curio and you had enough provisions? There are a lot of ways to mitigate stress. So as long as you're mitigating stress and you're coming out with a low amount, then you're doing fine. Number three, you are getting a ton of loot and spending most of your provisions. I am someone that over prepares with provisions. I think I made that disclaimer in my provision guide. So I'm someone that usually has to throw away a couple things in the middle of the dungeon, but even if you bring extra torches and extra this and that to handle the curio, you can still manipulate your light level to get good loot. So bringing extra torches is fine. So as long as you're not throwing away like half your provisions at the end of the mission, you know, something like food's a bit harder to judge because sometimes you just get no hunger checks. But all the other stuff, like if you bring four herbs, did you use at least three of them? If you brought six holy water, did you use five or six of them? Those kinds of things are much easier to tell than food. So if you're spending most of your provisions that you brought and you're not finding yourself going, man, I wish I had an extra holy water or I missed like not having the shovel. If you find yourself in that situation where the amount of provisions you're bringing are perfectly or almost perfectly matching the curio you're finding or the battles you're getting into, then you're doing pretty good, especially if you end the mission with a ton of loot. Sometimes there are just no loot curio and there are not a lot of battles, like that, that happens, but on average, if you're leaving dungeons with full packs of stuff that are not your provisions, then you're playing well. Number four, which probably should have came after number two just because they're kind of the same thing, and that is the fact that no one is dying. If you're getting through your missions, you're not getting afflicted, and no one is dying, then you're playing well. It doesn't matter if someone gets beat up, it doesn't matter if you have to heal them a bunch, that's just the nature of the game. But if you're getting out of the dungeon with no deaths, or you have like a death every, I don't know, like 10 weeks or something like that, maybe more than that, probably more than that, like 25 or something like that, then you're doing okay. 
it doesn't really matter how much HP damage you take over the course of the dungeon as long as no one's dying because all of your HP is healed the moment you leave the dungeon and there are a lot of ways to heal HP in dungeons either through skills, camping, or curio. So as long as people are not dying and you're not having to repeatedly see death door checks, then you're doing fine. So if you have teams that are really good at control or they have really good uh, recovery mechanics, recovery, what, <laughs> what kind of word is that? Uh, if you have really good recovery mechanics, then you're going to be fine, you're going to come back, doesn't matter if you get crit for 25, if you hit death door, you can heal back up sometimes, so it's okay. It's okay to take damage in this game. You're never going to not take damage. I think that's something a lot of players stress about. They stress about like, oh, I took, you know, 50 stress, you know, from this one fight, and sometimes that sucks, but you can heal it. If you take a bunch of damage, you can heal it if you have like a decent team and you're playing well. So as long as people aren't dying and they're not afflicted, so these kind of things go hand in hand. So as long as they're not dying and they're not afflicted, then you're doing okay. The last thing we're going to talk about in this video is something that Nick brought up and I thought it made a lot of sense, and that's if you're just having fun. I know it sounds kind of cliche and silly, but honestly, if you're having fun in the game, then you're doing fine. You're playing well, especially because it doesn't matter like all the other stuff I just talked about if you're enjoying yourself, because if you're learning from losses, I think that's something that's really big to talk about here. So you're having a good time. Even if you're losing, it's your first time playing the game, your characters are dying, you don't know what anything is because you you know haven't checked the wiki or maybe you're just like watching videos like mine for the first time. So if you're still enjoying yourself, that's the most important thing. And if you're learning from your misfortunes and your setbacks and your mistakes, that is probably the best metric to say that you're playing well because no one's an expert the moment they boot this game up the first time. You can watch every single video I've ever posted and you're still not going to be an expert. Like, you're not going to know every single in and out. You're going to run into a situation and go, well, Shuffle didn't talk about that. And it's going to happen. It's going to suck. So there's just so much in this game that can go wrong. And as long as you are learning from that experience, then it's good. So one of the things I do like to make sure that people understand is there is RNG in this game. It can be BS sometimes, but most of the times that, like, something goes wrong... It is usually preventable. Even some of the things you think are not preventable, like you don't think they are your fault, you should go back as far as like two, three, four turns to see if you made a mistake somewhere. Go back to how you prepared for the mission, go back to like what you did in town, and see if you can understand it. And I have a story that does explain what I'm talking about. This was during my Blood Moon run originally on Twitch, so the first set of VODs that I was uploading. I had a Highwayman go into Champion Wards, and he had level 4 armor. This Highwayman got, I think, crit twice, down to exactly Death Door. He had, I think, I don't know, like 38 HP or something like that, 36. I forget what Highwayman's level 4 HP is. And he got crit for the exact amount that needed to happen for him to go to Death Door, and he died immediately after because the enemy got three turns back to back. So most people look at that and go, wow, you really got screwed on speed rolls because the enemy went back to back. There's nothing you could have done. And for some, for like that specific instance, they are right to some degree. However, where I'm saying that you need to go all the way back sometimes to see where you might have messed up, and this death was still preventable by me. So what I'm going to highlight here is the fact that Highwayman had level 4 armor. I had enough money, I think, to give him level 5 armor. I chose not to because I thought he was going to be okay. Had I given that Highwayman level 5 armor, he would not have death stored from the two crits, and he would have survived the third hit that hit him. So because I didn't give him level 5 armor, he died. And that's not the game's fault, although it was kind of, you know, garbage that the enemy got two crits back to back and went three times in succession. You know, like, that's a low percentage thing to have happen. But even with that low percentage thing, I still could have played around it had I prepared better. So that's something I want to make sure that people understand, is sometimes you do get the completely unfair thing, you could not have done anything about it, like you get crit down to death store, die on the first check, your flagellant dies at 87% death low resist on a black reliquary or something like that. That kind of stuff happens. Was it? No, it wasn't a flagellant, that was left right thing. Anyway, that's besides the point. So, regardless of that, there are things you can mitigate, and as long as you're doing your best to mitigate them, you will minimize those chances where even the fringe like 0.5% of situations will kill you. And so that's one of the biggest things I want to make sure Darkest Dungeon players understand is they go, yeah, well, you know, 70% of the time this works. And it's like, yeah, you don't want it to work 70% of the time. You want it to work, you know, 90% of the time, which is good. 
70% is fine and passable, but the goal is to make it work the vast majority of the time and then have some kind of strategy that mitigates those super fringe cases. And it may sound silly to play around that sometimes, but like, sometimes you have to. Sometimes Butcher Pig crits you for 20 something and puts you on Death Door with a bleed on top and you weren't expecting it because he can hit rank three. Sometimes that stuff happens. It's on you to try and play around it the best you can. All right, sorry for that little filibuster there at the end. I don't know what else to call it, but anyway, that's the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you do all the other stuff that we talked about, all the normal YouTube things like liking, commenting, subscribing, hit the bell, which I never talk about, but some of you do hit the bell. I see it in the Twitch, or not Twitch stats, the YouTube stats. I see it. I appreciate you. And then check out Discord and all the other cool stuff in the link or box below, I should say, because there's a lot of cool stuff there for you. Anyway, that's it for this one. Next video, I'm not quite sure what it is yet, so I can't give you a sneak peek. But that's it for this one, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.